One question I always got a lot was, why does an IT degree have so much darn programming? There are a lot of people out there that don't like programming and they want to get into tech but they don't want to program. It's really where they want to be, they just aren't into the programming part of it. So I'm going to talk about that today. Before I do, if you can like this video, I really appreciate it. It helps me with the YouTube algorithm and it also lets me know that you like this kind of content and you want me to make more. Also, if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe. Okay, so let's go ahead and get to it. Okay, so the first thing that you need to know is it's not just about the programming. What you're really learning here is kind of computer logic in general. There's a certain way that computers work and I certainly can't explain it in this short video. It takes quite a long time to begin to understand this. Now this goes beyond just programming itself and that is, no matter what you're doing, there is a logic to how things work. And if I'm going to compare this to anything, it's kind of like with math, that if you're an engineer or you're doing some kind of chemistry, you do a lot of math. And if you're wondering why you do a lot of math, well, it's a way of understanding how certain things work. Take physics, for example, a, phys a physics class. It's almost all math. And you would wonder, well, why is it math considering we're talking about physics? Well, because that's the best way to explain how things work in the world physically. And mathematically, you can express that, you can be test, tested on your understanding and all of that. So programming is the same way with computers that even if you're not going to go into programming, programming is an excellent way for them to teach you how a computer works, how it thinks at the very core. And you really will need to know that to get into these different kinds of jobs. It's kind of a, just something you need to know in general. Even if you're going into management, this is something that you should know if you're you know, managing something with IT or tech in general. Honestly, I wouldn't really want to work under a manager that has no understanding of this. So that's the first thing. So then the next thing kind of builds on that, which is to say that this type of kind of computer logic I'm talking about, this abstract concept, it's used a lot more than you think. And programming actually is too. And what I mean by that is you might think of an IT department as a giant home network. And that's really pretty far from the truth. You might think, well, you're just stringing up some big routers and some big switches and you have a lot more computers. But other than that, that's what you're doing in IT, right? That's really not true. That is a part of IT. But one thing you're doing with IT is you're basically running all of these different applications for companies. Now, you have probably worked at some kind of company before and you may have used some kind of online service and had no idea that this was something that was done by an IT department. Maybe it was how you, you know, put your time down. Maybe it's how you applied for the job itself. There gets a lot of things where you'll see the logo. It looks like something that they must have made from the ground up and it really isn't. What I work in is called ServiceNow and it's a way for us to develop applications for things like this for companies. Now, the thing about this is you need to know how to program in order to work with it well. You can do some things without programming, but those things use the same logic that programming does. And I know that sounds kind of weird. How can you, you know, be using logic of programming without actually programming? Well, think about it. You have a GUI and there are sets of drop downs. If, if you've done like if statements or loops, you pull down the drop downs and you choose to do if statements and loops. If this happens, then this happens, that kind of thing it's kind of really still programming. You're just not typing all of it. And it's a lot more limited, which is why actually being able to code is still important. So programming is used a lot more in IT than you may have previously been thinking. Keeping these things going is really something that requires a lot more customization than you know something on your home network. It's not so simple as oh, I install this application, I upload the company's logo, and bada bing, there we go, right? So that doesn't work out because every company works different. So nobody that makes a platform like, say, ServiceNow can actually, you know, just install it and run. They have their own way they want it to work. And when there's a custom way of doing things that you want a computer to do, you can make it easier on yourself by using these platforms, but in the end, you're gonna have to kind of code somehow whether that be like what I do, just writing straight JavaScript or actually using some kind of GUI that still follows that programming logic. So that logic is very important in most everything you do. I mean, one thing you'll learn in, in programming pretty early on is stuff like binary math, right? Well, if you're doing networking, you need to know how that works because that's how IP addresses work. So 
there's much more involvement with that programming logic and also programming itself in IT than you would think by just you know picturing a company and thinking of it as like your house but way bigger tons of routers tons of computers that's basically one of the big reasons programming is so important in IT so the next reason is probably the one that you want to hear but it's also in a way true and that is it's there to make it hard and yeah maybe that's not actually what you wanted to hear but there's some truth to it just bear with me here Electrical engineering is known to be a hard degree, right? I think everybody pretty much understands. It's, it's a more difficult degree. Now, if I was a university, wouldn't I be smart to just like come along and make an electrical engineering degree where all you do is paint pictures of electrical wires all day, and then you can graduate with a degree in electrical engineering? Well, the thing is, it doesn't quite work that way in that actual degree programs have to be accredited just like the university is. Now, last I checked, the IT degree does have an accreditation, although I don't know that all IT degrees at all universities are accredited. I believe the one that I went to is. But the idea is the university, either way, wants to be known for producing graduates that are, you know, at a high level. And that helps their graduates get jobs, which in turn helps them donate later on in life. So there is kind of a standard for different degrees, and IT is also one that has a kind of pseudo standard out there. So they have to kind of make it hard. Now, I once knew a guy in college that, you know, he asked me, um, why can't I find a degree that doesn't involve high level math, that doesn't involve programming, but isn't no job city? Well, the answer to that is supply and demand, if I put it most simply. If a degree is really easy to get through, there's going to be a lot of people that opt to do it and then there's going to be a lot of them out there so it won't pay that well and you know with the inverse if a degree is very hard to do and only a few people can get through it then it's going to be in a lot higher demand so people will be willing to pay a lot more money for someone with that degree and that's how that works so basically if you're getting yourself into a degree you know like IT that's going to have a good chance of getting you a good job that's going to be because, you know, the, the job is good because the salary is good. That's a big part of it anyway. And the salary is good because there's not that many of you out there. So if it was easy, it would kind of defeat the whole thing. And that's why you see that happen. Now, programming is kind of the heavy focus to make the IT degree hard, although it does have some high level math. But if you're like me and you're good at programming or you can give it a chance and, and get the hang of it, this can be a huge advantage to you because I am okay at math. I would even maybe call myself mediocre, but I'm good at programming. And that really helped me get through probably the you know, highest level degree on that supply and demand that I could. Um, and maybe I could have done better, I don't know. But I wouldn't really rank degrees by tiers or anything like that. There's a lot more to it than that. But when it comes to the supply and demand thing, that's why it is where it is. They have to make you do something hard so they make it programming because that most closely relates to what you're going to be doing. So the last thing I'm going to say is if you're doing an IT degree and you're getting frustrated with all the programming, all I can really ask you to do is kind of calm down and give it a chance. It can be really frustrating sometimes. And when you're first starting out, it, it just seems ludicrous, right? You know, how am I expected to know how to do all of these things? The idea of college is you're given a hard task you know, you're given a hard medium and you find a way. If you're one of the people that can find a way, then you deserve the degree because you're showing that when you go to work for a company, you'll also be able to find a way. And that's what the company is going to think of too. So what I mean by, you know, give it a chance is, yeah, it's, it might suck for quite a while longer, but try not to have a bad attitude towards it because it takes a long time to learn and it takes even longer to get good at. But once you do get good at it, oh man, it's fun. It's great. It's like, you know, a lot of people say, well, math is fun, right? And, and, and everybody else is like, what are you kidding me? Well, that's because they took the time, they struggled through it. There was no doubt a point in their life where they did not think that math was fun. But now they do because they got good at it. Programming is the same way. When you get really good at it, you can do so much. That's why it's a thing. If there was a simpler way to do the same thing, everyone would be doing that, but there's not. And that's why programming is such a powerful tool because if you get good at it, you can make a computer do just about anything that you want it to. 
And yeah, sure, it still takes work and you still get stuck on bugs and you still have late nights and you, you might still be working until you're pretty tired, you know, like I am right now. But after a day like I had now where I did a lot of programming, yeah, I may be a little bit tired, but I feel great. You know, it's a lot of fun. I accomplish a lot. And there's something about being good at something that's hard to be good at that just feels really good. So if you're in the IT degree and you're getting, you know, frustrated with the programming, be patient with it. It's not an instant gratification thing. You'll get better with it as time goes on. Very slowly, year by year, you'll notice that, hey, I actually am pretty proud of myself for being able to figure that problem out. You know, before, I don't think I could have done that. And you do that year by year, and eventually you're just running circles around people, and it's just a lot of fun, because now you know you can make whatever you want. Whether you do or not is up to you, but every time you find a clever way to solve that problem, and you turn it in early, and now you know that, you know, you can relax, that's a good feeling. So, anyway guys, that's my video. Like, subscribe, all that stuff. Have a good night.